Aside from my stethoscope, my phone is my most useful asset on the wards. And I don't just mean for playing games. I'm Tria and I'm a junior doctor working in London. Today I'm going to talk about some of the apps that I use on a daily basis that help me be a doctor. So the first app I'm going to talk about is the BNF or the British National Formulary. This is one that I use on almost a daily basis. It's basically a big database of medicines, so I don't use this for common things like painkillers or antiemetics, but I use it for medicines that I'm less familiar with. For example, the other day I had to prescribe some furosemide for a patient with heart failure, so I had to go and check the dose on this app. Now it's really useful because it also tells you things like side effects and also how the dose may change if the patient has kidney failure, for example. The BNF also has these information pages about different common conditions and the ones I end up looking at the most are the laxatives and the anticoagulation page. So the next app I'm going to talk about is called Induction. I hadn't heard about this app until I joined the hospital that I'm currently working at. Basically it's a telephone directory specific for the hospital that you're working at. So I'm currently working in A&E and a lot of the work that you do there involves calling other doctors and asking for their opinions or asking for them to come down and see a patient. So I do spend a lot of time on the phone. So let's say there's a person come in with a paracetamol overdose and we know that they have a history of mental illness. In this case I'd have to call the liaison psychiatry team to come down and see this patient. So what I do is look up site liaison on this app and then find the number to call or bleep them. So many hospitals in the UK under the NHS use these ancient communication systems like pages, bleeps and home telephones. The telephone and bleep system is quite archaic but having an app like this is really useful because you can find all the numbers in one place and you can't really find these on the hospital website. Another app I use on a daily basis is called MD Calc. Basically this app has a lot of scoring systems that are used in medicine and surgery and these scoring systems aid in things like diagnosis, investigations and management of conditions. It's really useful to have all of these scoring systems in one place and also the way the app works is that you can input the results directly onto the app itself and it'll give you the score. So the ones I use almost every day in a &E are GCS or Glasgow Coma Scale which is to figure out someone's basic cognition and neurological function. I also use things like AMTS and the Wells score for risk of pulmonary embolism or a deep vein thrombosis. So let's say someone has come into a &E after a fall and they've hit their head. So when you go to assess this patient, we see them lying in bed with their eyes closed. But when you say, hello, how are you doing? They open their eyes. And then you ask if they know where they are and what time it is and what their name is. Then you can figure out if they're confused or not. And then you ask them, can they grip your hand in order to work out if they have any motor function? In this way, you can then score their GCS out of 15. When it comes to GCS, it's more important to think about the clinical context and how this number changes over time. For example, if someone comes in with a GCS of 15 out of 15 initially after their fall, but then this drops down to 12 after a few hours of sitting in A&E. Now this is worrying. Normally I don't just whip my phone out during a consultation and put the numbers whilst I'm talking to someone. I usually just remember the results and then when I'm finished with the consultation I'll go and put them in on the phone. But the one instance when I do take my phone out during a consultation is when I'm doing the AMTS. This is a scoring system to help figure out mental status and there's quite a few questions that are quite long-winded so I generally tend to take my phone out and put it straight in. So the next app that I use is called Medical Flash Notes. This is a really useful app App, which gives you a basic overview of some common diseases and it's really useful to brush up on key information before going to see a patient. So it usually gives you information such as the symptoms and signs of a disease, the investigations, management and treatment and also sometimes complications. So usually what I do is before I go and see a patient I will tend to have a quick look at the notes especially if it's a condition that I don't see very often in A&E or that I need a little bit of a reminder of. So generally when someone comes into A&E you have a little bit of information before you go and see them. So if they've been brought in by an ambulance you'll usually have a couple of lines of handover from the ambulance crew themselves or if they've just walked into a &E, then they usually see a nurse first so you get a couple of lines for example you might say a 50 year old male with two hours of chest pain and palpitations okay so this next up is Anki now if you're a medical student or probably even if you're a prospective medical student you'll definitely have heard of Anki so basically it's a flashcard app that works on repetition in order to get you to memorize facts. Now each day it'll present to you a number of cards for you to work through and if you miss the day then the numbers will add up and you'll have more to do the following day. This gives me major flashbacks to medical school 
because in the last two years of medical school I used Anki like crazy. Now I definitely do not use Anki at all now that I've graduated from medical school and I'm officially a doctor. I have suspended all my decks but my Anki flashcards do have pretty good information because I basically copied all my medical school finals notes and put them into flashcard form. So sometimes I'll have a quick search of a specific flashcard in a similar way to the way I use the medical flash notes app. So the next app is not strictly a medical app but it's one that I use every day because I have a long commute to work and I've recently taken to listening to podcasts. There's loads of good ones out there and if I'm in a particularly medical mood there are a few that I find quite useful but usually I want to have a break from work and listen to something completely different. Okay so those were all the apps. There are lots of medical apps out there but these are the ones that I use on a daily basis and the ones that I find the most useful. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you again in the next one. Bye!